Hey class, it's Bill Berry continuing week two's demonstration. We're using objects and drawing graphics and in the first part of the video we learned how to use scanner objects and so we basically are at the point where we have gathered the user data and we are ready to then get our drawing panel ready and then start drawing some stuff. So let's jump in right there. Uh, so basically what you'll want to do here is the drawing panel class is provided for you and it's a it's a really nice way, interesting way to get this stuff rolling and uh, provided with the textbook so it's really easy stuff but let's let's figure out how to go use that. So you can go to the our, our class website and you can get everything from drawing panel Java and uh, one easy way once I've already created the project I just need to create a new class and I'm going to call it drawing panel. It's important that the file name matches the class name and in this case we're going to make sure that that happens. We're going to create drawing panel and then I'm going to just erase everything here and paste in the Java uh, the drawing panel code that's provided with the textbook and you're going to see it can compile and it's just fine. So the thing is already there and ready for us. We just have to bring it into our project. And then we're going back to our code and we can use that drawing panel object. We use the scanner object and we're going to use the drawing panel object. Now notice for the drawing panel object we don't have to import it because it is not actually foreign to us. Everything that is listed for us in this world is something that is available to us it's all part of the same package so it's easy for us to do things and we don't actually have to bring in the drawing panel object so using what we learned before how to set up a scanner notice that we're going to have uh, objects when we use objects it's going to look a lot similar to that so what is the type of the of the thing we're setting up we're setting up a reference to a drawing panel object. So this creates the variable that's going to hold the reference, but now we actually need the drawing panel object to be set up. So we say new and we say drawing panel and then we must provide something sometimes you can you can start objects with no parameters uh, but in this case one of the easy constructors or you know typical parameters to get it started is how big a drawing panel you want so we're just going to set up a 200 by 200 drawing panel the user is going to tell us boxes up to 100 so drawing panel 200 size gives us plenty of room again this sets up a reference variable pointing to a newly created drawing panel object. So it may look odd to you that you have this thing twice, but if you think about how these reference types work, hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, the other thing uh, we can start doing is using that object. So, again, you can say dp. Dot. Now, you don't have API reference because drawing panel object is not provided, but you do have other documentation that you can use. And one of the cool things that you'll see, let's pop over here and let's take a peek at it, is if you go to the drawing panel code, but instead of source code, you choose documentation, one of the things that you'll note here is that you've got a whole bunch of good stuff that you can have. So this is in essence your help. How is this generated? This is generated from all of those headers that you see provided in Java all the time that we tend to ignore. We'll talk more about them, but here you can go find how to use this object with all its different methods. So really cool stuff that you can find just by switching to the documentation tab of Drawing Panel, which gives you an, an introduction to a thing called Java Docs. All right, now back to our regularly scheduled program. What do we want to do with the drawing panel? Well, an easy uh, starter thing that we want to do is to set its background color. All right, so we can say the name of the drawing panel reference, all right, the, the object that we're using. We're going to say set background, and then we're going to tell it what color. There's various ways that you can do this, but an easy thing to do is we say color dot, and then in uh, uppercase you can say a, f a field name right a, a basically a constant there is a color object and it has a white um, a white object or white field data that we can use and so we can just say color dot white now one of the things that we're going to start seeing is it says wait a minute I can't find color colors not provided with uh, with the drawing panel color is a is a Java thing that we need to bring in so we need to remember the import for that and that's going to all of this stuff is going to be in Java AWT and this is going to be color right so now it's going to compile correctly and be able to work
So we set a white background color for this thing. And then one other thing that we need to do, you can't draw on the panel directly. You have to have what you can think of as a paintbrush, right? You need something that's going to let you interface and sort of paint on that drawing panel. And the way that this is done is with an object called graphics. So we're going to set up a new graphics object reference and I'm going to call this DPG drawing panel graphics and it is going to be constructed by saying drawing panel dot get graphics. Alright, so what happens is drawing panel will return a graphics object. This is again sort of like a paintbrush. It will return a graphics object and then this graphics reference will point at the graphics object that is created from the drawing panel. So you've basically said, hey drawing panel, give me a paintbrush to paint on you. And you've saved it in a graphics reference called DPG. Again, I'm saying a million things and you want to stop and think about these things because they're going to be a little mind-boggling at the beginning. There's a lot of information being set there. But now basically we have our paintbrush. All right, now we can start drawing on the, on the thing, which is what we want. Now again, we're going to see that this doesn't quite compile. It's going to say, wait, what is a graphics object? So can you guess what we're going to put here? I bet you can. Java.awp.graphics and then it's going to compile just fine. Cool. Now, now we want to go paint. Right now we want to go do some fun stuff. So we can say I'm going to use our DPG object and I'm going to say set color. That's one of the things that you can do. Now, to find those things, go to the API documentation and find the graphics object. I hate that you have to scan so far here. There just seems to be a better way and I'll hope to find it and share it with you. But anyway, find the graphics objects, gra graphic object and you can find all of these draws, all of these sets, all of these fills, all of this stuff is here. So you have it all at your fingertips. You just got to go look up the object. Okay, so I'm going to set color. What color do I want to do? I like blue. I'm going to say color dot blue. Okay. Now, what else do I want to do? I want to use my paintbrush and I want to do a filled rectangle. So I don't just want to draw the outline. I want to actually fill the thing. So I'm going to say fill rect and now we have to think about and talk about a new concept and that is that the origin of the graphics object that we're working with, if you think about this guy here in the sample, the origin up here in the upper left is 0, 0. You move to the right on the x-axis, so this is point, you know, this is 200 wide, so this is point 100, right? and it's zero down. So this is 100, zero, this is 100, 100, this is 100, 200. So the origin is here, you move across for the x-axis and down for the y-axis. So it's x-coordinate and then y-coordinate. So that'll, you have to sort of translate your thinking or think about sort of what what quadrant we're in, uh, you know, from Cartesian math to, to think about how this works. So you have to think about that a little bit. But basically, I want to draw a, um, a blue rectangle at, let's say, 50, I want to start at 50, 50, right? So that's, that's 50 pixels down and 50, pi 50 pixels across and 50 pixels down. That should give me a good space. And what, what width do I want to use? Well, I want to use box width that I got from the user. And what height do I want to use? I want to use box height. So that should draw me a blue rectangle. And let's go see, does this compile? It looks like it does. Let's go run the thing and let's see if we can get our box. Okay, so let's see, where did our window go? Okay, what is my name? Well, my name is Bill. I want a box that is, uh, let's say, 80 wide and um, 23 height. And in my drawing panel, I have to move it so you can see it. There is indeed our blue box. Yay! Notice it has a little pointer you see down here in the status bar. It provides you a status bar and you can actually go see the, the points here and get an idea of what point things are at. And sure enough, this is at about 50-50, so we expect that. So that's cool and our program seems to work. Now let's go back to our code. Now the rest shouldn't be too, too, 
too amazing, right? Uh, let's draw the salutation, and we're going to use a drawing panel graphics, right? We're going to use a graphics call called set font. Again, you can find that in that reference, and we're uh, we're going to need to pass it a font. So I'm going to create a new font object because I don't have any fonts lying around, and I'm going to choose Arial Bold and I say how ornamented do I want that font I just want a plain font and what size do I want I want 12 now if I were going to do a lot of font work I would probably create a font object and then I could mess with the parameters within it but I'm going to use it for only this one time so I don't even create a, a a pointer or a reference to a font object I just sort of create the new font and pass it in when I do this set font so that's what I'm doing here, but you'll see it's not going to compile. Why? It says, never heard of font, but I bet you know what we can do next. All right? Now, some people would get lazy up here and say, import java.awt.star. Like, I'm just too lazy to figure out what I really need, so I'm just going to import the whole world. It's going to take a little longer to compile when you do that, and there may be some other benefits, but I kind of like to know what exactly I've brought in, and uh, I don't want to just say include the universe, so I'm going to be a little more careful at, when I can. All right, so I'm now ready to draw the user's name, and we only have a couple more things to do. It compiles now fine. Now, I want to make the username uppercase. I brought it in, I started in username. So, uh, can I do something like this? We know that strings, if we go and look at the reference or read the text, we know that strings can, have, can use all sorts of cool methods like to uppercase. And if I just call that, I change the name to uppercase, right? Well, not so much because strings are what's called immutable. Strings are immutable. You, you don't change them in place. You don't actually do operations that change individual characters on the existing string. Strings, once they are created, are what they are, and if you try to do something like this, you'll find that it, it has done nothing. You've called uppercase, which is great. It takes all the name, converts it to uppercase, and then it discards it because no string functions are going to change the existing string. So we have to do this or nothing has happened, right? Nothing, nothing useful has happened or been saved. So that's an interesting thing, a good demonstration of string immutability. Try that uh, that we just created and see what happens when you move forward. It doesn't work. So we have to always save the results when we use these string methods and that's an easy thing to forget. All right, and now this isn't too hard. We're using our paintbrush to draw the string and again look at the API if you want to know uh, more about that and I'm going to say hello and then I'm going to concatenate string concatenation the username which is already now in uppercase and I can I want to store it or I want to draw it at 0 14 now it seems odd that I'm using 14 here but there is some header room in that drawing panel, right? There's some room at the top where it has the menus and some other stuff there, and that is actually part of that canvas. So if you draw at 0, 0, it will appear not to draw, and it will confuse you, and you will have to go look it up on the Internet to find out why it doesn't work. Does it sound like maybe I did that? Yes. So um, you need to come down from the top a little bit. So I'm starting at the left side, but I'm coming down from the top, and you can play with that number to move it down, certainly. So, if life is good, will this compile? It compiles. Let's see if it runs. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to run main. Uh, what is my name? It is still Bill, turns out. I'm going to draw a, you know, uh, 37 wide by, uh, you know, 100 high box. The drawing panel is drawn. I can bring it up so you can see it. And indeed, I have Hello Bill. Notice it's almost at the top, so it's got a little room here that you need to, to leave. So that's why my 14 offset. And here's the box. You can use the little pointer to figure out that it starts at about 50-50. It ends at about 86150. So you can figure out that it's drawn exactly the width that I wanted and the height that I wanted. So that's our drawing panel output. Now, this is super crude drawing. You can certainly get a lot more clever. You can draw ovals. 
uh, you can draw rectangles, you can fill, you can draw fills. Now notice it's not like Paint, Microsoft Paint, where you draw the thing and then you drop a paintbrush and it just fills the whole area. You're actually drawing the whole fill yourself. But you know you can you can actually get some decent graphics if you think about this. And the assignment that you'll do for this really does do some I think kind of amazing graphics. Now you can create another drawing panel by the way too. One you know we can draw on this drawing panel, but we could create a second drawing panel object with its own separate paintbrush, of course, and you can draw that. And your assignment it's going to ask you to do that too, to draw one drawing panel with certain things on it and then draw and make another drawing panel and draw some other things on it. So that'll give you practice understanding different objects, etc. Um, now one of the things I want to talk about just briefly, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, you want to think about the fact carefully that you have this object and understanding drawing reference or graphic objects and object references in general. So one of the things that I want to show you, I'm not going to get deep into this, but I just want to talk about this for a second. Let's say that I did this. I created a second drawing panel and I said, I call it test DP. Um, I can create that. Now what if I just set that equal? This is a, a compilable statement. This says I'm going to create a drawing panel reference called testdp and I'm going to set it equal to, I'm going to point it at the existing drawing panel that I have. So this is really interesting stuff. So what I want you to think about briefly here is if I say background, and I say I want color but this time I want light underscore gray, right? Underscores are used typically when you have constant type things. Now, so I want you to, I want you to think about the, the answer to the question. When I draw my drawing panel down here, when I show and draw on my drawing panel, what color is the background going to be? And the answer is going to be, it is gray. Why is it gray? Because I'm drawing on what I think is the graphic object pointing to this guy when I create this. But you want the way you want to think about it is remember that this is a reference, right? This is a reference to a drawing panel. This is not a drawing panel object itself. And so when I did this thing, I'm pointing both references at the same object. So if I alter one object, the, both of those references are pointing to the same thing, so in essence they have both been altered. That is different than integers and other elemental types where if you have an integer called x and you create a new integer variable called y and say equals x, it copies the value over so you don't think about this thing. But when you think of references you have to think differently and you have to say I have two references pointing at the same object. So if I I, you know, if I alter one, I have altered the other because it's the same darn thing. So that is a little bit mind-boggling, but I don't want to get too deep into that today. But this is the this is really tests your knowledge of reference reference objects and reference types. If you think about this kind of stuff and play with it with these kinds of examples, you'll see what I'm talking about. So that ends the demo. Sorry, the demos are this demo is going a little long, but there's a lot I wanted to say in that little bit. Uh, but hopefully, this is really useful stuff in getting you started and getting ready for the project and understanding how to use objects. We did some interesting things with string objects and immutability. We also did some interesting things with learning how to draw graphics and setting up drawing panels and using the graphic paintbrush. I call it a paintbrush. In other realms it might be called that. Uh, so that's an easy thing to understand. So how to set this up. We did some user input using scanner. So we learned how to set up the scanner objects and get tokens and store them uh, when they came in. So really there's a heck of a lot in these demos. You may want to watch it back and understand and stop and think about the terminology. And that brings us to the end of this demo. So thanks for watching and being patient with a little bit longer demo but hopefully worthwhile one. Let me know if there's other things that you'd like to see in this kind of video, and I will do it. Thanks for watching.